trying to find them. Yeah, so we've we'll, we'll just got their photographs and, and just, just a sentence about each of them. Um, our first lady Sorry. here, Esther Ra. Okay. The activity she was involved in. Has anybody ever seen the film Escape from Scott Sobibor? <gasps> right, well, Esther was one of the group that planned the escape at Sobibor. Oh, that traumatised me. Yes. Well, I, I made my, one of my, my eldest girls. I actually made one night, I made her sit up and watch it with me the second time, and she was traumatised by it. Well, Esther was one of them, and she's actually, you know, at the very end when it shows them running into yeah. the forest, she's one of them that's named at the end. So that's Esther. Um, in the middle, we've got Blanca. Blanca Rothschild, there's a famous name for you. And, and Blanca uh, has, tells a beautiful story about the importance of sharing and friendship inside the large ghetto. And the, the sharing that took place, it got really, really cold one winter. And there was a group of about eight of them. And there was, they had one glove. And they shared the glove. What an act in itself, sharing one glove. At the top, in the, in the top corner, sorry, I've got to go back to my notes, Barbara Rodbell, Barbara Liedemann, Rodbell. She actually, after, after the war, she became a ballerina. Didn't mention that to you. No. So, doesn't she look like a ballerina? Yeah, yeah. actually, yeah. Um, and, and she was, she, her, what, what she was doing was using false papers. She received false papers and used these false identity papers to get herself around in the Netherlands. And um, although they were probably never together, that there, there are quite a few from the Netherlands that they, she knew of Anne Frank and, and probably was aware of Barbara. Here we've got Charlene Schiff, and we talked before about Amidal. And Charlene organised a clandestine school in the ghetto. It was in uh, Horakoff. Is that how you pronounce it? Horakoff, in the Horakoff ghetto. So working with children to maintain the, the old traditional Jewish culture and religious practices in, in the ghetto. And here we've got Henny, Henny Fletcher Aronson, and she talks about the importance of cleanliness in the ghetto, in the stood off uh, no concentration camp, because to her, cleanliness was a sign of her dignity, a sign of her self respect, and a sign of her humanity, and that to her was more important than, than anything else. So, we, so when we talk about this spectrum of resistance activity, the simple act of staying clean to her was absolutely paramount. Um, finally, just over there, we've got uh, Judith Meisel, who was smuggling food quite regularly in and out and around the Kovno ghetto. So, different kinds of activity going on there. Fran, you've got